welcome to Sunday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic. Today we're going to be taking a look at a puzzle by SSG. Um, I think we only featured a, a puzzle of SSGs a couple of weeks ago, and that was mighty fine. This one has an interesting title. It's called Yes, the Clever Equation. I, I guess I could understand a puzzle called the Clever Equation, but I don't know what the yes is doing there at all. Um, uh, you may speculate. I won't have a clue. Uh, anyway, we're going to get to this one in just a second. Uh, testing reports are that this is magnificent as usual. Um, now, uh, before I read you the rules, a couple of things to mention. This evening, 10 o'clock UK, UK time, uh, Mark and I are returning to the good ship Oberdin to try and clack, uh, crack some more murders. Um, so we're live streaming 10 o'clock. Uh, we'd love to have your company. Yes, uh, you've asked for it. We have to wear our hats. I'm going to be wearing my hat. This is my captain's hat. Um, I know it doesn't look like a captain's hat, but it's the best I've got. Uh, no doubt Mark will be wearing something suitably ludicrous um, or similarly ludicrous. Uh, other than that, just oh, check out uh, the video we released yesterday on the channel, Two Truths and a Lie by Zetamath. This is the puzzle that many of you have been requesting. Um, it's got an, a monstrously long rule set, but a monstrously brilliant uh, solution path. And um, yeah, we released it for our patrons on Patreon a couple of weeks ago. It is now available on the channel. It came out yesterday. It's already garnering a lot of feedback and um, a lot of interest. And if you want to have a go at this puzzle, you can, of course, just click the link under this video. You will find it there and do have a go at it. You will love it. And with all that said, let's get on with Yes, the Clever Equation. I'll read you the rules. We've got normal Sudoku rules apply. Digits cannot repeat within a cage. Um, Actually, I was just stopping there because I was expecting it to say digits must uh, sum to the number in the top left corner of the cage. But actually, we've got no, we've got no number in the top left corner of the cage. But that is because um, I hope people won't consider this part of the solved path. I don't really think it is. These are both nine cell cages. Now, given the rule digits cannot repeat within a cage, we know, therefore, that these nine digits in this cage must be the nine numbers you have in a Sudoku, um, for there are only nine, and um, as digits cannot repeat, there must be one of each of them in the cage. And we could actually, because of the secret, have written the number 45 in the top left corner, because the numbers one to nine sum to 45, and you can see both these cages are the same shape. Um, now, what else? We've got digits along an arrow must sum to the digit in that arrow's circle. So we've got normal arrow Sudoku rules. Uh, how does that work? Well, this cell here is the sum of those two digits. So if that's a three, or I tried to type three, managed to type four. Right, if that's a four and that's a five, you have to put nine in there because four plus five equals nine. That's how the rules work. Do have a go. The way to play is to click the link under the video. Now I get to play. Let's get cracking. And I suspect, actually, I don't know what I suspect, but I can see that that arrow in the middle, these three digits on it all have to be different digits. So the minimum I could put into these squares would be one, two, and three, which sum to six. And that means this little digit here in the circle must be a relatively high digit. It's got to be six, seven, eight, or nine. Same is true, look of this one. This is a sort of a split arrow, but this limb of it is definitely three different digits. So again, the same principle applies to that arrow there. Um, wow, I'm not seeing much here at all, actually. Let me, column eight is a little bit interesting because we see this trick sometimes. There are actually five cells on these two arrows uh, coming down column eight. So if we, if we filled these digits with their absolute minimum values, this would be the digits one, two, three, four, and five in the outlined blue cells. Well, one plus two plus three plus four plus five is 15. So these two circled cells have to sum to at least 15. And that means this one also has to be at least six because given we're only playing with Sudoku numbers, we, we can't we can't use a five here because five plus 10 is just not possible uh, because 10 can't go into a Sudoku cell. Right, now let's see what else we've got. We've not got many syzygies today. Syzygies being alignments of circles or planets. Um, but I'm not actually seeing 
much here. I'm just going to highlight all the cells that have arrows in them. Sometimes this can help you to, you know, it, for example, it makes this string of cells in column eight stand out more to me at least. Um, nope, <laughs> I haven't got anything. <laughs> right, so we're going to have to probably use these funny shape regions then. What is it about the nine cell regions that we've got to understand? I'm almost thinking Fistimabel here. Do you know, I, I think it's because I do so many puzzles that involve two by two squares and set theory, but I don't think there is a Fistimabel sort of equivalence that deals with these particular shapes. You know, obviously we've got the, the standard one and we've got the one I had to do the other day, which I think was that one. But these are sort of, they're slightly offset. So I don't, I don't know if there's a, there's a set I'm meant to understand there, but I don't think I know what it is, if there is one. Um, right, so what on earth do we do now? I know that these are the digits one to nine. I know that these are the digits one to nine. But there really isn't, at least not at first blush anyway, much communication between the arrows. I mean, if you look, just take a, a very high level view of these two regions, let me highlight them. You can see this cell very lightly overlaps with an arrow. This cell overlaps with a circle and these two arrow cells poke in and that's it. So there's not an overwhelming amount of interaction or at least there's not so much naked interaction. Maybe there's fully clothed interaction and that's the stuff we've got to understand. Um, wow, wow, <laughs> sorry about this. Um, maybe it is set then. Maybe normally when I'm absolutely got no clue, there's some, some madness going on in the grid. So let's just think about that for a moment. If we're gonna try and create equivalences between various sets of digits in this puzzle, how should we do that? It's got to involve this nine cell region somehow. So maybe it's box, um, maybe it's these two boxes. And then, uh, yeah, okay, what we'll try is we'll try these two boxes and then we'll try eliminating maybe those those two. Let me just stare at this for a second and see if this is in any way useful. I can see it might be useful. I think I'm just gonna go with this. I apologize if I'm about to waste anybody's time, but let me explain what I'm thinking. The, the blue cells I've highlighted, we have no idea, or at least I have no idea, the order of the digits within these blue regions but I can describe the contents of those blue regions very precisely because any correct box of a Sudoku will contain all of the digits from one to nine once each. So the blue cells contain exactly two sets of the digits one to nine. Now, some people get confused about set theory. So I'm going, the way I'm trying to explain it in videos recently is I want to imagine that you have a Scrabble tile with each each of the digits one to nine in it for this box and each of the digits one to nine for this box. So we've got 18 Scrabble tiles, two of each digit, and I'm gonna put them in a blue sack in this hand. So this is my sack of 18 blue digits in this hand. And now I'm gonna highlight a different set of 18 digits and I'm gonna use a different color. I'm gonna use orange and I'm going to, so I'm gonna highlight those cells. Now. This cell is in both sets. So this is complete. This is column nine of this Sudoku. Obviously that has nine digits in it. This is row nine of the Sudoku. That has nine digits. But whatever is in this cell here is in both of those sets. So that's two, that's two Scrabble tiles. If that was a six, there would be two Scrabble tiles with six in that would correspond to this, this digit here. And I'm gonna put these in my orange sack. So at this point, I've got 18 uh, blue Scrabble tiles in, in this hand and 18 orange Scrabble tiles in this, this hand. 
both of which contain identical digits because they each contain the digits 1 to 9 twice. Now, let's say this digit here was a 5. This digit has both colours, it's blue and it's orange. So this, this digit here definitely is in my blue sack and it's definitely in my orange sack. So if I remove it, if I remove that Scrabble tile from blue and from orange, then clearly the sacks still contain the exact same digits. They just contain 17 digits now, but those 17 digits are still the same because I've taken the exact same thing out of both of them and they were the same before I took that digit out. So that's what I'm going to do. Any cell that has both colours, I'm just going to remove it from both of my sacks like that. Um, um, actually, I better make it clear that this one is, is doubled. Now, now what are we going to do? The reason I thought this might be interesting, by the way, as I, as I sketched it out earlier, is I could see there's a relationship between this cell and these cells, which are in different colours because of the arrows. And the same is true down there, look. So I, I am going to be able to build some sort of equivalences here although it's going to get complicated in terms of my sackage. Um, but let me explain what I mean now. At the moment, we've got, I don't know how many digits we've got in both sacks. We've got 12. We've got 12 digits in both sacks, and we know they're the exact same digits. Therefore, if we were to add all the digits in both sacks together, they add up to the same number. Now, what about if I took those two cells or those two Scrabble tiles out of the blue set? and I took this Scrabble tile out of the orange set. Well, then I would have a different number of tiles in each of my bags, but they would still add up to the same number because of the rules of the arrow Sudoku. This, these two digits, by the definition of arrow Sudoku, add up to the circle. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to remove those cells from each sack. So this, these came out of blue, this came out of orange. I've now got a, I now can't say that the, the Scrabble tiles are the identical Scrabble tiles because I've got a different number in each sack, but I can still say the Scrabble tiles in blue add up to the same as the Scrabble tile in orange. I can do the same here, look. These two blues add up to this orange. I'm going to take two blue Scrabble tiles there, take that orange out. Where's this going? <laughs> um, now... Now this one is double orange, isn't it? That's a problem. I don't like that very much. I tell you what I can do. I can tell you what I'm going to do now. Yes, I know what I'm going to do. This is at least a little bit interesting. What I'm going to do, this, this Scrabble tile here, I, I, I used the example of six before. So, these two cells, if this is a 6, these two cells add up to 6. So I could replace one of the Scrabble tiles I've got in orange, which is a 6. I could take that 6 out and replace it with these two Scrabble tiles instead. And I could still say that the blues equal the oranges. So I'm going to take, don't forget there are two of these Scrabble tiles, whatever this digit is, in orange. I'm going to take one of them out. So this is going to lose its purple flash. So this digit is now only, this digit is only once in the orange sack, but these two digits come in in its place or in the place of one of these oranges. Now, why have I done that? Well, what I'm wondering, I'm getting quite close to a total box of the Sudoku here. And I've got quite close to a complete set of the digits one to nine here. So now what I'm planning to do, and I admit this is mental, but this is the way my brain works, is I'm going to add to both my, I'm going to add to my blue sack, whatever this digit is, and I'm going to add this digit to my orange sack as well. So I'm going to get the Scrabble tile that's whatever this digit is, I'm going to put it in both sacks. So that becomes orange and blue. And this one I'm going to do the same thing for. I'm going to add it into both sacks as well. Now, what I'm thinking is I could cancel out my blue. So, so the blue cage here is all of the digits one to nine, once each. The orange, this box nine, is all of the digits one to nine, once each. So if I was to remove 
one set of the digits 1 to 9 from orange, and I was to remove one set of the digits 1 to 9 from blue, I could do that, couldn't I? That would be fine. So if I'm removing these from being, these are no longer in the blue set anymore. Uh, so I take those out. Now I need to take these out of the orange set to, to match what I've just taken out of the blue set. And I just get left with this blue cell and these orange cells. And I know at this point that my one blue Scrabble tile in my blue tile, my blue, my blue bag, blue sack, is the same, adds up to the same number as my orange Scrabble tiles. And there are four orange Scrabble tiles and the minimum value. Oh, yes, I actually got something from this. I was about to say, I was about to say that gives this at least a, a minimum value of six, but I can do much better than that because of this one. This is absolutely beautiful. I've no idea if this is how you're meant to break into this puzzle. There's probably something much more straightforward to do, but I bet there isn't anything more beautiful because look at this cell. This cell, let's, let's imagine this is, this is sitting in, my, in my, my orange sack, that digit there that's outlined in blue. Well, I'm going to take that out and replace it with these two digits instead because these two add up to that one. So let's do that. So I've now got a situation where I've got, I know that the orange squares in total add up to the same number as the blue, but those three are all different digits. So they must add up to at least six. If I put one plus two plus three in there, that's the minimum they could be. But if they add up to six, the minimum I can make those two is a one and a two. And that means I've got a minimum value for the orange of nine, but that can't be more than nine because it's just one digit in a Sudoku. So that is nine. This is a one, two, three, triple, and that's a one, two pair, QED. That is absolutely, is that the clever equation? Oh, please let that be the clever equation. <laughs> that was just, that's just gorgeous. Um, now, what do we do with this newfound knowledge that we have? Have we now broken into the puzzle? I mean, this must do a lot, mustn't it? N ah, yeah. Nine in box six. It doesn't go there by Sudoku. You can never put a nine on an arrow that's three cells long, because this cell obviously would be more than 10. Uh, it would be 10 at least. When it, in fact, it would be a ludicrously high number. But let's ignore that. You can't put nine in any of those cells. So nine is in one of these cells, and that's beautiful. Because remember what we said at the start, those two, the syzygy of these two planets is the sum of those five cells. These five cells have a minimum value of 15. One plus two plus three plus four plus five. So now that must be a seven, eight pair. That's the only way we can make these two add up to enough. And that means these squares are one, two, three, four, five, quintuple. This digit here, where does it go in column eight? It must go exactly there because it can't go in these three squares. And here is a knowledge bomb from cracking the cryptic. The digit seven or eight is not the same as the digit one, two, three, four, or five. So that square there is that square there. That's a seven, eight pair in row nine. Uh, one, two, three, now, what does that mean? I don't know. This square must be a little bit restricted because it's the sum of two very low numbers. Yeah, and in fact, imagine that was a one, two pair. That would be a three. And that's impossible because you can't have four digits in a box that are selected from three different digits. So then, well, so this square must be a one or a two to stop this being a one, two pair. And this square is either a four or a five. Ah, yeah, okay. We can keep going with the geometry of this mad cage now because th this cage, don't forget, it has to have every digit in it, including the digit nine. Well, nine can't go there. It doesn't seem to be able to go there. By Sudoku, it's not there. So it's in one of those two cells. And that means it's there in box seven. So that's a nine. Which means... Um, what does it mean? I 
don't know quite what it means. I sort of I feel like we might be able to get this at least a bit restricted. We've got seven eight here. You can't put seven and eight on this arrow. So at least one of seven and eight has to go in these cells, whereupon because of the communication around this cage, they won't go in those cells. Oh, no, more simply, more simply. Uh, what's this digit? Well, one th we've got to place eight um, in, in this box somewhere because we've got the seven, eight pair here. So eight is not in these cells. It's not in those cells. Is eight here? No, because then this cell would have to be higher than eight and it's not. So eight is in this domino in, in box six, but that domino is in the cage. And that means, oh, this is so clever. So now eight is not, it can't repeat in this two by two because it's already in the cage and it can't be in the bottom row because there's a seven, eight pair in the bottom row. So eight is forced onto the arrow. That's a one, eight pair to obviously give us nine. Um, now what? Uh, this arrow now is at least two plus three. So this is at least a five. I suppose that is worth noting because it can't be eight and it can't be nine. So this is five, six or seven now. Seven. Seven must be in this cage because of the seven eight pair here. So seven is now yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is gorgeous again. So now where does seven go in this box? It's not there because there's a seven eight pair in the column already. It can't be in this two by two because there's a seven in that two by two, which is part of its cage. So it must go there by Sudoku, and therefore this must be an eight and that must be a one. Uh, it's absolutely gorgeous. This is this is already one of my favourite puzzles that I've done recently. And recently we are in the golden age of Sudoku. Um, now what? One in the middle box is a bit restricted. One of three places. Six, seven. Uh, <laughs> what, what now? Can we, can we keep going with this? So this, this is an eight arrow. So these two cells are adding up to seven and these two cells are adding up to seven. So this is either two, five or three, four. And whatever it is, if that was three, four, you'd have to, you'd have to put three and four down here, which almost breaks that cell, but not quite. Oh, I'm going to tell you something that's a little bit interesting. I've got this one, two pair up here. So that means this arrow here is at least a three, four arrow. So this square here is at least a seven. That sort of feels a little bit interesting, doesn't it? Um, this eight we said was the same digit as that. So that's an eight. That's a seven. Why don't I just finish off the Sudoku while I have that opportunity? These squares have got to be six, seven and nine. These squares are three, four and five. I think I think all all options for this this circle is still on the table. It could be three, four, three, five or four, five. And we get to every digit that we need to in the circle, which is a little bit annoying. Um, okay, <laughs> so what does this mean? That's our next challenge. Can we, how do we make better progress? <laughs> uh, is there, is there balm in Gilead? I don't know. Oh, I know what I can do. I can ask a simple question about the nine cell cage. Where's its one? It must have a one in it. It's not in that two by two. It's not in that two by two because of the ones already in the boxes. So that's a one. Which gives me a one and gives me an eight. 
which gives me a 1 at the bottom of the grid. That's nice, because now I know this arrow is adding up to 2 plus 3, which is 5. Now 5 has make, made an appearance in this 2 by 2, which means it's not in that 2 by 2, but we know this adds up to 7. So that is a 3, 4 pair. This is now a 2, 5 pair. Good grief. Now three and four have to be down in this triple. And in fact, look, we've got three, four here and three, four in this triple up here. So this domino must be a three, four pair. This square here must be the other digit to complete box nine, which is a six. Now I've managed to get a five, six, seven, nine quadruple into that two by two, which feels at least a little bit interesting. That can't be nine. That can't be nine. Oh, we've almost, look, we've almost got a, a quadruple or a quintuple in column six. These three squares are now two, ah, they're two, three, and four. Oh no, they're two, three, and four. I was hoping I might be able to limit one of the options for this circle, but I can't. Again, all options are on the table. But now this must be a 2-8 pair to complete that column. And these squares are now known. They're 5, 6 and 9. Well, we have, we've done okay, haven't we? We've got somewhere. <laughs> it's not far enough. I've done very well in sort of the right-hand side and the bottom of the grid. But unless I'm missing something, which is very possible. What about this arrow? This arrow is, it's not a nine or an eight. It's adding up two digits that could include a one, I think. So it could be a very low number. So the options for this are four, six, seven, eight, nine are possible. Four, six or seven on this arrow. That's got, I think that's got a world of options. Um, okay. Is it this one? Do we have to use that one somehow? Don't like the look of this one. <laughs> it's much, I don't think it does anything, does it? Let's try the same thing again, though. Um, let me just think about it. Do I need the colors? I don't think I need the colors I've already got in the grid. Let's get rid of those colors. Let's try boxes two and four this time. Let's just shade those in. And the last time I went for this sort of pattern, didn't I? So let's just take a look at that. Oh, that's a horrible color. Sorry, let's go green with that. So we could get rid of these. We've now got purple and green sacks. Uh, these, no, I don't like this at all. The, these arrows that we've got working with us now are just horrible. Um, so we probably have to, but we haven't used this at all. This must be good for something. Oh, it's not odd again, is it? I bet it is. I bet it is. Oh, right, here we go. Here we go. I think we're, well, Mark, I don't know if you've seen Mark's puzzle yesterday where he battled manfully with a viciously difficult puzzle from Ard van der Vetering, the Dutch constructor behind the world, probably the world's most famous Sudoku. It's been uh, viewed and attempted over seven million times. Um, but Ard is famous for that video, uh, many, many other Sudokus, but also for a set trick to do with this region of the grid and that region of the grid. Now these cells here, there are 16 of them, are the same cells as those 16 cells there. And it strikes me that's probably interesting because of this little arrow and the way it's interacting between those two, uh, those two sets. But let, let me just show you why that, that set theory works. Um, let us, how am I going to do this? I am going to highlight those cells, I think, is the best way of doing this. So what have we done here? 
So we're going to have some new sacks to work with. That's we're going to have a blue sack that contains one set of the digits one to nine in this box, another set of the digits one to nine in that box, the whole of row four, the whole of row five. So that's two more sets of the digits one to nine. So the blue cells at this point are four sets of the digits one to nine, and I've put them in my bag again. Now, my orange bag this time is going to contain the final four columns of the grid, those cells. So again, in my orange sack, I've got four sets of the digits one to nine. So this is exactly the same contents in my, on my Scrabble tiles as the blue sets. And I can remove from both sacks any digit that appears in both sacks. So you can see all of these cells can all come out of both sacks. Let's take them out. And that proves the equivalence that we were just talking about. So it's a slightly simpler relationship. Now, why do I think this is interesting? Well, firstly, I can see that I've got this cage. That cage is by definition, one set of the digits one to nine. Well, so is that box. So it's very tempting to just cancel those out of both bags, isn't it? Now, the other thing I can see is that this is going to has the same sum as that. Although, no, no, better, better, probably better anyway. This, this puzzle is still giving some lovely, lovely logic. Check this out. Look at the orange cells. Look at, well, look at our orange bag of digits. Yeah, we, we've got these each of these is in our orange bag and we don't really know much about our blue bag but we know it's also got seven digits in it what digit is not in the orange bag one is not in the orange bag none of these options is a one so how could that square be a one it cannot be because the orange bag contains the same digits as the blue bag but if that can't be a one that arrow is an, it's adding up to nine because from the moment you can't put a one on a three cell arrow that's got to have different digits on it the minimum you can put on it is two three and four adding up to nine there we go that's not nine that's not nine where does nine go in this box it goes exactly there that's not nine this is this puzzle is ridiculously good. It is absolutely brilliant. Now, yeah, yeah, it is brilliant. Now I've got two, three, and four definitely in my blue bag of tiles. So I must have a two, three, and four in my orange bag of tiles. Well, which of these cells can be two, three, and four? Those three can't. So there must be those digits. That digit cannot be an eight. That must be a two. Ah, nearly useful. So these two are the three, four that correspond. So these three squares correspond to those three squares. That's an eight. Eight is in only one of two places now in, in this box, box five. Two, three, four, triple in column five and in row five, actually. Um, these cells and these cells interact. So is that making it very difficult to put two, three and four into this box? I bet you it is. Two, where do two, three and four go in this region? Not there, not here, because there's already seeing a two, three, four in, the, in their box already here, not there. So these cells here have to contain these four digits have to contain three of the digits, two, three, and four. Which feels like it's probably important. That digit's got to be at least a five, and that's on this arrow. So if that's a five and that's a one, five, is one impossible here? No. Five and one would make that six. So this arrow is now at least equal to six. This, ah, this arrow can't be a four, five arrow anymore because that can't be nine. So this is either three, four or three, five. So there is a three on that arrow, no three here. Um, 
now so we've got two three and four which is mapping to these so the other cells yeah okay that's probably going to be worth noting isn't it the other cells in orange are a five well they're selectable from the digits five six seven and nine so these cells have to be the digits five six seven and nine in some order Hmm. Okay. Can we do something with that? That's not nine. Well, I said it's not nine. <laughs> Go away, nine. I don't want you to be nine. That's not seven. Um, wow, I can't see what that means. Oh dear. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. Can we get rid of... Um, I don't know what to do. I feel like I'm close to understanding this puzzle, but... But I haven't, still haven't quite got there, have I? How long have I had? 36 minutes. That does that's flown by. Absolutely flown by. Um, come on. Where do we look now for some sort of break in two? Yeah, okay. Two in this box is in the two by two. So two is ruled out of these squares, which means two is in one of those two cells, which does absolutely nothing. I don't believe it. Um, this arrow is that somehow limited can't have a two on it so if it's a four it's one three if it's a six it's one five it can't have a two on it oh good grief right okay this arrow is restricted i was not expecting this one to give me some joy but i think it has if it's if this is four that's a one three pair if it's six it's a one five pair so it still has to have a one on it if it's seven it can't be a 3-4 pair or a 2-5 pair. So it's got to be a 1-6 pair. So there's always a 1 on this arrow. Which means that square is not a 1. Which means this square is a 1. Which means there's a definitely a 1 in this domino in box 2. Which <laughs> means... Um, I know this will mean something, I just don't know what it is. Seven in this box is now restricted, isn't it? Seven's got to be in that domino. So seven in this box. Is that helpful or not? I'm not actually sure it is. No, okay, we're getting very badly stuck now. Um, I'm not even sure it would be that helpful if I was able to lock the 7 in there. Because all I'm then proving is there's no 7 in here. But the 7 could still go in the domino. So we're still going to have to think harder. Is there, some, is there some reason that that's a 5, 6, 7 triple rather than the possibility it could be, say, double 5, 6? I don't think so because these aren't seeing each other. So that doesn't feel very likely. Two, three, four. Is it the two, threes, and fours again? Let me go back to them. We've got loads of these stacked around the grid. Ah, yeah, okay, that domino. That domino's interesting. Where does this domino go in this box? And the answer is, I don't know. Well, I do know. It's, it's there, isn't it? It's got to be in those two cells. So those two cells and those two cells are the same, which means they must go in those two cells. So that, those digits there are two, from 2, 3, and 4. So now I've got another 2, 3, 4 triple, this time in this row.
Wow, okay, that's hard earned. I, I think there would, I'm almost sure there must be an easy way of doing this. But now I, where do I place eight in this row? It's not there. It's not in my two, three, four, triple. It's not in those cells and it can't be there by Sudoku. That's an eight. Whoa, that's tricky. And But that's not nice. That gets me a seven here. Wow, actually that is big because now that's a seven. And now I know that this must be a three, four pair, which means this is a two. Therefore, that's not a two. Now I've got a three, four pair here. So that's become a two. Those are not two. We knew that for four. So this this means something. What have we got here now? We know those are adding up to seven, so they must be three and four. That must be a five. Get rid of the three sideways pencil mark. This column now needs twos, threes, and fours into those positions. It's so close, isn't it, now? Seven. Yeah, okay, here's a Here's a little point. I'm not sure if it's a big point yet, but it, it's a little point. Seven is not in that two by two and it's not there, but it must appear in the big nine cell cage. So I think it's got to be in this domino and that takes it out of that little square. So I've now got more things going on, but still, Oh, seven can't be there, in fact. So seven is fixed in box five. So what are we actually left with into those two squares? We're left with fives and sixes of all things. Which... Okay, okay, that is beautiful. It's actually beautiful. Because now I've got a five, six pair out of nowhere in row six, which means those squares cannot be five or six. Oh, whoopsie, I just want to eliminate it from those squares, which means this is a one, three pair and that's a four. Now that feels like it might matter again because that's ruling three out of those squares and making them a two, four pair, giving me a three here, four here, three here, four here. Yeah, this is going again. Twos go into those squares. Four is resolved in box six. One, three, this, this square's a naked single. That's got to be an eight. Again, I've got that, that's, that feeling that that eight's been available for ages, but I don't, I don't know whether it has been or not. Um, these have got to be from five, six, seven, and nine. Five, six, seven, and nine. What can we rule out? Five from that one, nine from this one. And don't know if we can do better than that. Ah, I've just noticed I've got a five, six pair in this column as well, because that seven is ruling itself out of there, creating a five, six pair. So this is, a, ah, that's a one, eight pair, which is resolved by that. Eight and one go in the grid. And that's actually disappointing. That doesn't seem to have done very much at all. Seven comes out of this square. So there must be a three in this domino. It's from three, five, six, and nine. So that's not five. It's still not done. I don't believe it. And that is why you fail, Simon. Why? What about those squares then? They've got to be six. Ah, that's a seven by Sudoku. So this is a six, eight pair by Sudoku. That seven is fixing things. Seven goes here. Seven comes out of there, which, oh, actually eight's also out of here. Ah, got it, right. Now that square can't be a one because of this one here. And that means this can't be a six because it's adding up five plus at least a two. So that's got to be nine, which means this square has to be something meaningful. Yeah, now we should ask where nine goes in this, in the nine cell region. It seems to have to go into that cell exactly, which means that's a three, which gives us the three and the four. Still it, still it resists. Um, nine, seven, and six can come out of those squares. Nine, what about this digit then? So this digit is either a four in the event that, ah, I can see actually why it's not a four, so it's not going to be a four, but we'll come back to that, or a three. 
in order to make this work. But look, this 4 here is dealing damage to this 2 4 pair. So that's a 4, that's a 2, that's a 3, that's a 6, that's a 5, that's a 6. Um, come on. 5 9 pair going across row 4. Ah, that still could be anything. This, no. How? How is this not finished? It's very, very cleverly done this because it has preserved a lot of its mischief, hasn't it, into the back end. I don't know. How, I mean, I could well be missing things right, left and center, but it's it's certainly not rolled over and let us tickle its tummy. We've had to really fight for this. Um, one, three, six and eight. Yeah, look, that's a naked single. That's so, so we've even got a bit of proper Sudoku. This column needs one, three, six and eight. And there's a one, three and an eight there. So that's got to be six, which of course does resolve that seven and that nine and that six. Now this square has to be a two or a four and can't be a two. So that becomes four, four, two. Okay, now that six is working on the six and the eight. This three is working, whoopsie, on the three and the one. This six is working on the five, the nine, the nine, the five. That's now a six by Sudoku. How is this not resolved at the bottom? This must be resolved. <laughs> um, what is it that's doing it? It's this four, isn't it? So that's a four, that's a three, that's a three, that's a two, that's a two and a five and a five and a six. Okay, so I think we are finally there, aren't we? Now we need ones, twos and fives. Two, two, one, five and one, seven and eight, which looks great, actually. That does look like it's right, doesn't it? Eight, seven, tick. Yes. Wow. That is a very clever equation, SSG. In fact, it was two very clever equations. The first one was absolutely mad, mental. It was mental. Um, I was sort of adding in things to my, my, my t sacks of tiles and taking them away liberally in, in order to work out this square was a nine because of those squares. That was absolutely beautiful. It really was. Um, but it didn't give up after that. I then had to... We had to use a bit of art trickery around there. And I mean, it was a lovely idea. The fact that you couldn't have a one in orange and therefore this arrow gets forced is just, I mean, it really is. It's sensationally clever. That's what it is. Loved it. Absolutely loved it. Let me know in the comments how you got on. I hope you enjoyed it even a little or even a scintilla as much as I did. And we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.